All right, here we go. Albums, 2020, my favorites. A couple other things. Oh, and I fixed that light bulb back there. That was uh, out last time, but I took care of it this time. I checked on that before recording. Uh, since this idea was kind of a hit last time, we're doing it again. It's Austin's favorite albums too. Electric Boogaloo, 2020, quarantine edition, this time it's personal. Some familiar faces, some new ones, uh, but these are my 10 favorite musical albums of the year of our Lord 2020. I would say that this year I didn't branch out into new genres quite as much as I normally do, but my picks still reflect a pretty great variety that I think anybody of really any taste in music could find some appreciation in. In the link in the description will be a handy playlist just like last year, so you can try out one individual song from each of these albums that's in this top 10 list. These songs in particular I feel really kind of bring the heat and represent the album pretty well. So are you ready? Because it's list time. At number 10, we have Charlie XCX's How I'm Feeling Now. So Charlie XCX follows up her 2019 album Charlie, which, spoiler alert, is my favorite album of 2019, one of my favorite albums ever, with her new quarantine-inspired album How I'm Feeling Now. This new project, while featuring a lot of pop bangers, also features some really intimate and personal songs like Seven Years or the song Enemy, which literally has her in the middle of a therapy session on it. But it still has that trademarked hyper pop sound that Charlie has really kind of nailed recently. So while this year's album didn't pack quite as strong a punch as last year's Charlie, I still think that this is a super consistent and super solid record and totally worth a listen. It's definitely got more bops than flops. At number nine, we have Future and Little Uzi Vert on Pluto Times Baby Pluto. I was so stoked about this project and I was really surprised that a lot of people received it poorly. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. I thought the collaboration was super consistent and it just felt like it was packed with bangers. Future and Uzi both do their thing, they play to each other's strengths well, but they also complement each other's styles pretty well, and they really show how they are two of the most prominent figures in the rap game today. You could honestly put this album on shuffle, and I'd probably only skip a song or two. Like, for the most part, I really enjoy most of the songs on this album, and I, I can't really imagine asking for much more from these artists on something like this. At number eight, we have Lucy Vert versus The World 2, so the first one I love, one of my favorite albums, but the second one is actually a deluxe piece that was tacked onto the Eternal Take drop back in March. It came out a week later as a deluxe version of that album. My expectations were very much met when I listened to Little Uzi Vert vs. The World 2. I didn't feel that Eternal Take really met what I was looking for. The cuts on Love vs. The World 2 were exactly what I was looking for. That was the Uzi that I expected, the Uzi that I've grown to love over the years. My hopes are that Uzi's songs on future albums pack that punch that this deluxe version did because I really felt like those were the songs that I'd rather hear than the songs that felt kind of rushed like those on Eternal Tape. At number seven, we have Rina Sawayama's Sawayama. This album has been on a lot of year-end lists and it is absolutely deserved. I love it. It is such a strong debut from Rena. Her music just sounds so mature and refined. She borrows from a lot of her inspirations like Lady Gaga and Christina Aguilera, but she still somehow makes it her own. She makes it sound unique while still showing where it's coming from. Please be warned, if you listen to this album, symptoms may include uncontrollable singing, uncontrollable dancing, and just general mood lifts. At number six, we have Juice World's Legends Never Die. So if you watched last year's video, you know that Juice World's Death Race for Love made it into my top five. I really liked that album. Um, despite falling outside of that top five this year, I still think this is Juice World's most consistent and well put together album. It feels very cohesive, it feels very focused, more so than any of his previous works. While I think the last album had a bit higher highs, to me this is some of the best work that we may ever hear from Juice World. This album really shows just how much Juice World had kind of hit his stride 
before his untimely death. And uh, it really shows just how much of a loss to hip hop Juice World uh, is. And at number five, we have Don Tolliver's Heaven or Hell. This was another one that was kind of got some mixed reviews, uh, but I loved it. Despite not getting a release from Travis Scott, this really felt like a great holdover for fans like me, somebody who really likes that sound. This was a great replacement. Uh, Don Tolliver's voice is just so smooth over all of the beats and all of the songs on this album. The vibe is absolutely wavy, uh, in particular on songs like Euphoria and Company. It's just the type of album that I just want to put on and just take a long drive through the city through the late night, you know? At number four, we have Ty Dolla Sign's featuring Ty Dolla Sign. So Ty Dolla Sign wanted to bring his feature energy into an entire album of his own. And he brings that heat, hot damn. The melodies are so catchy. It's like turning on a radio station where I love every song. There are a few features that I kind of feel like fall short here or that I would have replaced with better artists, but really Ty's energy is what keeps me coming back to this record. And even the slow jams on the back end slap too. I was just so impressed by this project and it really shows that Ty Dolla Sign worked hard to show up for himself like he's shown up for his contemporaries and made that boss music that he's known for. At number three, we have Bring Me The Horizons EP, Post-Human Horror Survival. Um, I don't really know what compelled me to listen to this. I just saw some good reviews and I thought, you know, I'll check it out even though it was kind of not a genre I normally touch on. But man, I am so happy that I gave this thing a listen. I mean, it just goes so hard. This entire thing just gets me so hyped up. It's like all of that anger and frustration that I felt through this whole pandemic and quarantine. And it just sums it up and captures it so well. It just really gets me going. Oh! I mean, just from front to back, this thing is so damn good. Every song is worth a listen. I'm really glad that I gave these guys a shot and I really recommend that you do too because they are absolutely worth the listen, especially this project. At number two, we have Phoebe Bridger's Punisher. And man, I feel like a sad girl when I listen to this. I am a sad girl. Say it with me. I am a sad girl. This whole album is just like a deep, calming breath, which is really something that I feel like everybody has needed this year. Phoebe's voice is just so pleasant. I just get lost in the songs and their stories and the wordplay. It's like listening to poetry, which I guess all music is like listening to poetry. The melodies are just always in my head, like they're so good, all the song structures and the choruses, they're all great. The type of inspiration I get from this album reminds me a lot of Daniel Caesar's Freudian, which if you know me, you know is one of my favorite albums ever. It's just one of those albums that I absolutely love because I just find it so calming. And even the parts that are faster paced in this album to me, in Punisher, they're just so calming. They just relax me. And I'm just so happy that I can turn to this album in times when I need peace. Okay, so we've hit those first nine in that list. Before we hit number one, I want to share a few honorable mentions. There were a lot. This was almost a top 15 list with honorable mentions, but I'm just going to fire off the honorable mentions now instead. There's the Amanda Tate by They. There is Razzmatazz by I Don't Know How But They Found Me. There's Saw Machine Season 1, Strange Times by Gorillaz. There's St. John's, While the World Was Burning. And there's Ariana Grande's Positions. I loved all of those albums as well. They were close. They just barely didn't make the cut. It was, it was tight, especially the Amanda Tate and Razzmatazz and Song Machine Season 1 by Gorillaz. Those three especially really came close to making the cut. But those are the honorable mentions. Number one, the best album, my favorite album of 2020 was... Good Intentions by now. No, that's that's a joke, I'm kidding. But I will say there are a lot of great songs on that album. You could say what you want about Nob, you can say what you want about that album. It's got some slaps. At number one though, we have After Hours by The Weeknd. 
Um, my expectations for this album were high. I'm going to admit that. I went into this album with incredible singles and my soft spot for the weekend. It's just something that I knew I was going to have high expectations on. Even My Dear Melancholy, which is just an EP, it captured everything I felt through a breakup that changed my life. And I was like, there is no way that this album is going to be able to top that. And somehow it did. I mean, it just came through and shattered every expectation I had. Every single song is so strong and creates such a great listening journey. From the incredible start of the song Alone Again, which just by itself is an amazing auditory journey, to songs like Faith and Escape from LA, which was my most played song of 2020, by the way. And even the closer, Until I Bleed Out, everything just it's just so encapsulating. Like it's just all happening around me. It's like I'm seeing all these flashing lights. Like the theme of the album really captures the feeling of listening to it. That whole blinding lights feeling like that really is how what it's like listening to this album. Um, it's close to a perfect album for me. It, 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 it's pretty close. There's not really anything that I skip in it save for a couple of little parts of songs. Um, but it goes without saying that I think this deserves a listen from front to back, and it is my favorite album of 2020. So real quick, before I finish this up, uh, I should have done this last time, but I didn't really think to, but I'm gonna do it this year. Uh, I wanna talk about a couple albums that I really loved and would have made this list if they had come out this year, but they didn't. Um, first, I wanna talk about Waterparks' Fandom. It came out last year. Uh, when I released this video, my friend Hunter, uh, who's channel will be in a link in the description he does guitar covers he's really good uh, he showed me water parks and I listened to this album <laughs> this was like literally like a week after I released the video and I was so upset because this would have made my top 10 for sure it would have probably fallen somewhere around top three ish um, it, I really 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 love this album uh, it's just so poppy and fun and I have such a good time listening to it Next, um, Luke Combs is This One's For You. Uh, I guess I like country now. David has been recommending me this album for a while. I just kind of kept putting it off. And then on a long drive, I was like, you know what? Let's just give it a try. Let's see how it, how it is. And I just, I just kept coming back to every single song. Like this is an album I could really see going on my all timer list. And it's an album that opened me up to a whole new genre because it made me relook at what I consider country, what I consider the kind of country music that I like. Uh, you know, I just really enjoy it a lot. I think that's worth a listen. So those are two albums that I really loved this year that didn't come out this year, but uh, they're worth talking about. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, these are albums that I was bumping in 2020. Again, these are some artists that I've kind of always gravitated towards, but then there were a few newer players in there as well. But overall, I really liked these albums and I was really impressed with the output by these artists and it was tough to whittle this down to 10 like you saw in my honorable mentions there were a few albums that really came close to making it in that list but what do you think of the list i'd love to hear your thoughts i'd love to hear your favorite albums of 2020 please tell me because i want to listen to them and maybe it'll make my list next year at that little end section because last time i got a pretty great recommendation so you're gonna have to live up to that but Thank you for watching this video. I had a great time making it. I've been thinking about this list all year, so rest assured, plenty of time and thought went into it. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.